everyone, Katie and Forrest here from Clark's Condensed, and today we are so excited to introduce you to the Glowforge Pro. For the last few years, we have been sharing tons of different ways that you can create in your home and for your business, and we think you're going to love the Glowforge Pro. If you're new to Glowforge, it's a 3D laser printer that cuts, scores, and engraves. You might be watching this video because you just got your first Glowforge and you're not really sure what to do next. Or you might be considering a purchase of a Glowforge and you're not sure if it's the right purchase for you. Thankfully, you're in luck because in this video, we are going to tell you everything you need to know about the Glowforge, getting started with it, and if it's the right purchase for you. You might be wondering what you can even cut, engrave, or score with your with your Glowforge? And that is a great question. When you purchase your Glowforge, you will get a variety of Glowforge's proof grade materials. Proof grade materials are materials made by Glowforge that are designed to save you a lot of work. So the proof grade materials have QR codes that give instructions to the machine on how to cut the materials. That takes a lot of the guesswork out of your projects because you don't have to go in and mess around and do a lot of test cuts because they already are, they've already done all the test cuts to make sure that material cuts well with your project. Proof grade materials have protective coatings on them that make it less likely that you'll need to sand or paint. And finally, the proof grade materials are perfectly sized to fit into the Glowforge. There are other materials that you can purchase that aren't from Glowforge, and there you should definitely search out good distributors for that. There's a lot of Facebook groups that have a lot of resources on that, but if you are just wanting to make sure that you are getting materials that you know will work with the Glowforge, the proof grade materials are a really good option that you can buy directly from Glowforge. And as I mentioned, um, when you purchase your machine from them, it comes with a variety. There are a wide variety of materials that you can use with your Glowforge, including tons of times of wood, acrylic, and even glass. We're going to go through this package from Glowforge just to give you an idea of some of the different materials available. Again, you are not limited to just these, but this should give you a taste of what you can do. So this has medium natural leather, medium basswood, and medium walnut, walnut hardwood. And these are in different thicknesses and colors, obviously, since they're different types of wood. This is medium clear acrylic. This is basswood medium plywood. This is medium cherry plywood. That looks nice. This is medium draft board. So there's a couple of those. Oh, there's, there's definitely some of these that you would probably want to paint later and some that you won't, you would want to maintain its color. Mm -hmm. So the rest of these were the medium draft board. So I guess that's probably one of their more popular materials. A lot of the creating is done in the Glowforge, but like Forrest said, sometimes you'll have to go back and refin or finish it, paint it, maybe glue some things together. And so you have to keep that in mind when you're coming up with your project. That it's not The Glowforge isn't just going to put all of it together, but it does do the hard work of the cutting and engraving and scoring. So for the most part, you are going to be cutting with wood, acrylic, or leather. However, there are different materials such as glass and even silicone that you could use. I see people uh, engraving silicone watch bands, which I think is really cool. The most important thing is just to make sure you're getting your material from a reputable distributor that other people can vouch for and have had good success with. Let's talk about the price of the machine. Obviously, the Glowforge is not cheap. The most inexpensive model is the Basic, and it is $3,000. Then there's the Plus, which is $4,000, and then the Pro, which is $6,000. This is going to be an investment, and they do offer financing, but you definitely want to make sure that you are going to get the most bang for your buck when you're purchasing this. Most people tend to decide between the Plus and the Pro. So the main benefits of the Pro over the Plus are the pass-through slot, which is good for large format projects and enhanced cooling features. My opinion is that the best Glowforge is the one that you can afford and that fits into your budget. However, you should look at the long term and see if you will be happy with the one that you're getting. For instance, if you get the basic and then you know in a couple months you're going to regret not having some of the upgraded features, it might be worth waiting a little bit longer to get the one that you want. You also have to look at your goals and if you are doing it for personal use, you might be able to get away with one of the less expensive models such as the basic. But if you're planning to really blow up your business with the Glowforge, you might want to consider getting the Plus or the Pro. 
One thing to keep in mind is that many, many people are able to have their Glowforge pay for themselves. You just have to take a quick look in any Facebook group about Glowforge and you can see that people are making a ton of money with these machines. And I have talked to a lot of different people and heard a lot of different stories about how they paid off their machine very quickly. Obviously that takes some work, some marketing and some business, um, some smart business practices, but it is possible to make back the cost of your machine. We do have a post um, that you could get at the description in this video all, all about getting started with Glowforge as long with a free checklist on some things that you can do to get started. To make it a little bit less expensive for you, we do have a coupon code that you can use. You can get $250 off the plus model of the Glowforge or $500 off the pro. These are at the link in the description for this video. So make sure you buy, you check out one of those coupons before you check out with your Glowforge. So now we're going to unbox the Glowforge so you can see how the process works and how everything looks. All right, so we have to pull these tabs first. You don't want to break these. There. Okay, I was like, Okay. Did you pull yours out super easily? Yeah. Oh, that's so embarrassing. <laughs> I think there's some on the other side though. Okay. I think the lid comes straight off, with, like straight up. So. Oh, this one's a little trickier on this side. If you're having trouble, I think bending this plastic tab all the way back here can help you pull it open. So what you do is you take these out, take these off actually. So the Glowforge is 55 pounds, um, but with packaging it's even more. So this is definitely a two person job. Oh, I don't think I cut the tape on the back. Oh, I don't think. So there's tape here, we're gonna cut the tape and pull it. Yeah. Okay, there. now we can take the lid off. Drum roll, please. All right, a piece of cardboard, our recycling. Um, definitely packed in here really nice and securely, which is great. It is generally a good idea to keep the packing materials just in case you have to make a warranty claim. There is a warranty on the different machines. I believe it's 12 or 12 months for the pro. So keeping the materials in case you have to send it back will make it easier since most people probably don't have a box like this just laying around and you just want to have all of the extra materials and supplies that they send you just in case you have to send everything back. All right. So there's just some tape here for the plastic bag or something. So wow. This is sitting in. This is pretty cool. <laughs> I haven't actually ever seen one of these in person yeah. in the real life. So I don't know. You might need someone stronger than me. Well, um, should we put it on the ground? Yeah, point? let's put it on the ground. Okay. It does look like something that like NASA made or something. Oh, the whole box. Yeah. All right. It's yeah. definitely. Uh, this is definitely not cricket or cricket machines anymore. Yeah. <laughs> we should uh, we'll show you a comparison with our cricket later. Um, a two person job just partly by the size of it. Even if the weight wasn't an issue for you, I feel like it'd be awkward. Just, like, ugh. yeah, it's so definitely call a buddy up, have your spouse, whatever. Yeah, especially for this price, you would want to okay. grab it inside the plastic. Oh, sure. Because otherwise, you have to get the plastic off still somehow. That's true. Uh, okay. so let's try to get the plastic to fall. There we go. Oh my gosh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Should have waited for my brother to come home next week. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. It's a beauty. <laughs> so here's some of this packaging just to show what it comes in. So the first thing you will find is so the first thing you'll see is this piece of cardstock that says to turn on this magic button, which is right here, go to setup.glowforge.com and that will kind of give you the steps on how to take out all of the cardboard um, and the tape that is in here. We'll do a little screen video next to show you kind of what that looks like when you go through that process. 
So the first thing they recommend doing, and you should really do this with anything that you buy, is just to check for any damage, just to make sure that nothing happened in transit. So if there is anything damaged, take a picture or video and send it to them as soon as possible. And they should be able to help you get that resolved. But hopefully that's not the case and you can move on to step two, which is what we're doing. Um, it gives you a little bit of a get acquainted. So one thing to keep in mind is that you do need to have a hard, flat surface for your Glowforge. It, depending on the size, that's going to vary on what type of surface you're going to be able to use. But definitely look into that before you buy your Glowforge to make sure you have the space for it and that you have a place to put it. Because you really shouldn't just like put it on the ground or, you know, on a couch or anything like that. A flat surface is a level surface. So I'm going to use my level here just to check. I heard that if the table isn't level, then the door might have an issue closing. If it doesn't close, then it won't operate. So it's good to have a level table. So they do recommend that you have one inch of space on either side, uh, any side of the Glowforge, just for safety reasons. And then they also want you to confirm that your safety equipment meets the fire and safety and fume safety for the Glowforge. Um, so now that we have the Glowforge all ready to go on our flat surface, we are going to take out some of the different, um, removing the paper head, the printer head, and then just different orange and red bits. Um, take this tape off. Don't need to save the tape. I don't think that's like serious packaging material. No. All right. So remove the there. tape from the front of your Glowforge and then lift the lid and lower the front door. Which, is this the front door? Yes. Well, yeah. Seems like might be half of the front door. I really don't want to break anything, so I'm just trying to be cautious here. There we go. Okay. <laughs> All right, looks like we have a desiccant. Okay, next they say to take out the foam. They definitely make sure that this is uh, very secure when being sent. So inside of this foam, is the laser so we want to be very careful not to touch the lens of the laser so we want to touch just the metal part all right um you want to take this out here a little piece of foam okay go ahead and take this out so to remove this i'm not entirely sure what that is. is to remove your um that is to remove the laser later to clean it. Okay, so, like so that's important to have. A few months or so, I think it's good to clean it, depending on how much you use it, I'm guessing. This is what we clean the laser with. Is that for that's the one they suggest for cleaning the laser. Okay. It's the Zeiss wipe. Oh, there we go. I think picking up from the middle was helpful there. Um, I'm actually going to stick this back in here for a second, um, right there. Stick it to the side here. Okay. So if you have a pro, there is the option to remove the pro shields. Those should always be installed unless you have the pro pass through in use. So I'm just going to show some of these other steps here. I'm going to take off this tape now. There is this kind of wire band here. I'm going to just try to take it off carefully, not to jerk on it too much. There we go. All right. There's a little plastic clip. Just push down on it. Pops off. You'll save that. If you want to return it, that's all right. Um, unscrew these here. Spin them off. One on the other side. They're rubbery. So, two of those. So now I'm going to show you how to install the printer head. So we'll plug it in here. See that? It just goes into the side of this chip. It looks like a computer chip. There we go. And now Make sure that's so the this printer head is magnetic and it will snap into place. Tried to go a little early there. I think it wasn't quite lined up properly. There we go. Now it's lined up properly. So you can see how it's 
going side to side it's connected everything looks good now i'm going to push this back so i can get these silicone things here oh just a little bit more there we go all right i'm gonna push this all the way to the back we'll grab the crumb tray our accessory pack came in a separate box so we got three boxes one for the filter that we got uh, the Glowforge and this accessory pack. And these are some of the things that are in there. There's this power cord for the Glowforge here. This um, kind of like a dryer duct almost. But uh, this will help vent fumes and other things out your window. And the crumb tray here. This is what will catch the crumbs from the Glowforge. So now I'm going to install the crumb tray. This part goes in the back, like this. Okay. I'm gonna close it up, and I'm gonna attach this hose just to show you how to do that. So you need this with the Glowforge because when you cut things with a laser, you're going to get some smoke and fumes. You want those to go out the window and you don't want them to be in your house. If you don't have a window available for this, they do have a filter. A lot of people prefer this. They do have an air filter option if you can't use a window to vent. Right, this tube has these clamps. You just squeeze them on the side to make them bigger here. So. One of the reasons I picked this location for the Glowforge is that it's near a window and near an outlet that I don't really use for a lot of other things. Glowforge recommends that you don't use an extension cord or something like that. So we have an outlet and we have our window. So it's a good location. We're going to move the Glowforge to show you how to use the hose. This might be tricky for somebody. Maybe it'll be helpful to see it from this angle. Here's the fan that blows the fumes and the smoke out, out the window. I'm going to go ahead and get this on the hose before I put it on the Glowforge. Hopefully you'll have an easier time than I am. In most of the videos I watched of people doing this, they made it seem pretty easy. but. Apparently for us, it was a two-person job. <laughs> I think the main thing is you'll, you'll want to squeeze it until they're almost, these two parts are almost right next to each other. Okay. All right, here I go. So I'm going to squeeze this whole thing on here. seems pretty secure there, so I don't think things will be leaking out the side. Nice and tight. So this is the cord that connects your blowforge to the wall. They don't recommend using an extension cord or anything like that. It's best to have it directly connected to the wall and your power source for your house. So it is pretty long though. Um, I'm going to go ahead and insert that back here. in and even though it says to turn on this magic button you must go here that's really just so you set it up correctly that it has nothing to do with the thing that really turns the glow forge on is plugging it into the wall <laughs> all right it's the moment of truth let's see what happens okay. there is actually a switch on the back so turn that on and then see Close. you don't even have to press the button <laughs> that is tricky it really makes you think that the button powers it all but apparently it doesn't okay wow that's pretty feel like we're in like a well there's like a, a tube with some tube. liquid and like there's like bubbles going through it and there's like a curl yeah. tube over there that's pretty cool it's got a I think it's a co2 label is the liquid changing colors yeah it looks like it interesting so that was the unboxing and setup. It takes, you know, about 30 to minutes to an hour. Um, 
but hopefully that was helpful and next we will talk about safety because that is a really a really important topic when it comes to your Glowforge and you definitely should not be using this before you discuss safety, before you learn about how to safely use it. So real quickly, I think it's helpful to mention a few things to be aware of with safety with the Glowforge. It is a very powerful laser, so you need to be careful with reflections. So if you have something that's really shiny and reflective, you need to be careful with that to somehow kind of mask it. So make sure you follow Glowforge's instructions with that to prevent any reflections that could damage your machine. Another thing you should be careful with is dangerous fumes from cutting materials such as vinyl. Vinyl can create a dangerous gas Another thing to keep in mind is that if you don't have a window, they do have these filters that you can use. They are $1,000, but it is an option to consider if you don't have a window. So another thing to be careful with is fires. So it's possible if there's loose debris with the laser, it gets hot, it cuts things, that there could be a fire. So they really recommend that you watch your projects and not leave it unattended. You might be wondering, what can I make with my Glowforge? There are so many resources out there to help you either make your own designs or to upload other designs that people have come up with and are selling for other people to use. I personally love going on to Facebook groups that I am in, and there are people always sharing their designs, their ideas, and inspiration for you and others to use. Etsy has a lot of great uh, SVG files that are already available that you can go and download and purchase from Etsy to make projects. You can make your own design in programs such as the Silhouette Business, uh, Business Edition, Inkscape, or even Adobe Illustrator. Glowforge does have their Glowforge app, which is what you will use to eventually cut your design. And if you get your SVG files or you could create designs in different programs, you will upload it to the apps, to their Glowforge app that you can access through their website. They do have some beginner projects in there, and you can also sign up for Glowforge Premium, which gives you access to even more designs and projects. I sometimes like to use the ones from Glowforge just because you know that they've been tested and can be used um, effectively with the Glowforge. However, there are so many different ideas out there, and I recommend taking time being in Facebook groups, surfing on Instagram, and going on Etsy to see what di designs are already available, and that can give you some inspiration on how to create your own designs and make modifications to those um, in order to make the designs that you want to either for your business or for yourself. Now it's time to do our first cut. This is really exciting because this was truly our first cut so we'll see how it goes. Before you get started you will have to go to the Glowforge website and connect to your Glowforge. Um, you have it emits its own Wi-Fi connection, so you'll do that through your computer. You'll collect, you'll have your computer connect to Glowforge, and then it will connect with your Wi-Fi. And that just takes a couple of minutes, but it's something to keep in mind that you do need to have a good, solid Wi-Fi connection in order to use the Glowforge. Um, we are just going to use one of their beginner projects. We are going to do the Gift of Good Me Measure keychain. This is something that's free and it's available through the Glowforge app, which you can access at app.glowforge.com. Um, and then we will show you what it looks like to put it in and what it looks like as it cuts. So now I'm gonna put the material in. There's a camera in the Glowforge that will scan our QR code here and that we will use in designing our project. So let's try to open this without knocking the laptop off. All right, there we go. So we got it on the crumb tray here. It fits perfectly from edge to edge of this crumb tray. All right. Now we'll close it and get started.
So we, as you saw, we just finished our first cut and I'm not gonna lie, I was really nervous. I thought it was gonna all go wrong, but I was so pleasantly surprised with how easy it was. I, we just put the material in, all the settings, because we were using the proof grade material just went in automatically and it really went off without a hitch. And like they say, it was fun to watch. It was really cool. And I, I am just kind of geeking out over how cool it looks. A couple things that we didn't mention before, you don't want to open the Glowforge until the fans have completely turned off and that's for safety reasons. And one mistake I did, I just put the board in there and I didn't really adjust um, where the design was in the, in the app for Glowforge. So don't be like me, be a little bit more precise with where you put your design on the Glowforge app so you don't just cut out in the middle of a piece of wood that might, and we can still use it, but it may be a little trickier to design in, in the future. Here are a few projects that we've worked on over the last few months of having the Glowforge. As you can see, we've had some fun. This is a customized Mother's Day gift that we created. It has a little stand for that. Um, we engraved this leather book, Adventure is Waiting is what it says. Just for fun, I did this rock. So it, as you can see, a variety of types of materials. Silicone, Apple Watch wristbands can be customized. We did this these acrylic night lights for my kids. They picked out the characters and you can change the lights with these stands that we ordered ordered on Amazon. So the colors change and the brightness change and they really enjoy these night lights. So next we did these um, month tiles for babies you know, as they get older I take pictures of each month with one of these and we created these um, files ourselves so you can get those from us. This is a wooden bracelet this side I did a little less deep, but the second side I did a little deeper. I think the first side was a little better. Um, next, we did some food. If you're going to do food that you want to eat, you have to just do food. We did these garden tiles. We created these files ourselves so you can get them from us. We have a blog post with ideas for over 100 projects that can help you get started with your Glowforge.